there's a slight change to the what we'll do for the homework. Instead of putting 1030, you're going to put your recitation time. So just don't put 1030. So it'll be name, uh, 270. And then some of you have a noon recitation. Is that right? You're at 12. Others have the 1.30. So if it says 12 to 1.30, I'll know that it's 10.30, and your and Marshall will know exactly which one you're in. Okay? And then today's the 31st. Okay, so I hope this uh, really caused you to think. And I hope in that struggle that you made some progress and kind of figured some things out with this. But this particular homework will be primarily a presentation grade. So as long as you tried, you have complete answers, and it's presented in a professional way, you get most of not all the credit. Okay? So let's hand this one in. And then since we've still got people trickling into the course, so this afternoon is when I'm going to uh, post, start posting solutions to the homework. So this is our third homework that we're turning in. I'll be posting solutions since we're not spending class time to answer questions. So please get your questions answered, whether that's email or office hours or appointments. You've got to get your questions answered on things that you're not sure about on the homework. Okay? So once you've got your heading, let's pass them up. Okay, so always fold like this. So we got people making up their own way of doing it here. So like, okay. I'm not sure, ask, but always vertically, please. Okay. Okay, so last time I was uh, just want to review kind of a, a point I was trying to make. So when you're in math classes you've had before, you should have all seen lots of, of graphs, right? You worked with things that looked like this. Is this right? This is, you recognize this? It's at least very familiar. Okay, and so what I was uh, uh, trying to get at was, what is this portraying? You know, what exactly is this um, showing? What is it representing? Okay, so why don't you find a partner and just uh, for 30 seconds or so, answer that question. So what, what does this pink curve, what is it trying to show or represent or portray? Go. And I'm not asking about this particular graph. I'm just saying any graph. I'm, I'm saying here's an example of a graph, a curve. Okay, so any graph, what is it portraying or representing? Um, okay, I'll, I'll see those things. Okay, let's hear some of your ideas. What to talk about? So, anybody? What is this? 
depicting or portraying in a general sense? Any, any graph like this? Yes, sir. It's a, yeah, it's a function with Okay, yeah. Okay, so you're, you're picking two particular quantities. And he said, yeah, there's two quantities involved, right? There's a, a quantity that we represent horizontally and a quantity that we represent vertically. Okay, so that's very important key to this. There are two quantities. And so what does the pink curve represent? Yes, sir. Okay, the change in the two quantities. Um, can you say more about that or expand on that? So the quantities are changing. So as x changes, y ch also changes. And so this is showing on yeah, the back. Yeah, so it's just showing basically how they change together. How they change together. So that as this changes, the y changes. And so we're, it's tracking how the two quantities change together. So when I ask that question, did this come to mind for anybody? Does this have anything to do with it? Tell me. Um, it's like the like how the pace of the change. Okay. Um, and it's also the direction of the change as well. Okay. So how does how does this illustration? Um, how is this a different way of thinking of it as this? So these are really showing the same thing. How are these showing the same thing? Yeah. Uh, it shows the scaling factor of x and y. Okay. Others. How does how does how are these representing the same relationship? Yeah. It's showing the rate, which is uh, Okay. Rate is key to this. How they change together? Yeah. Okay. So this is monitoring the x quantity. It's showing that x quantity increasing. And as the x quantity increases, so how is the blue bars quantity represented here? Where where does the blue bar show up in here? Yes, sir. Right, and where does where does the blue bar, sh the, the quantity represented by the blue bar, where does it show up in this rendering? How in the curve? Yeah, so that's that's that the blue bar is the y quantity. So what did we do? We took that blue bar and we did what? We said, what if we were to? Take, just take the blue bar exactly the same as it was before, but now let's put it vertically, right? And as red increases, let's watch what the blue bar does. That's the relationship between those two quantities. And then we said, let's track that top point on the blue bar. And that's, I just used the kind of the analogy of the vapor trail. So if we just take that blue bar and we throw it vertically and then we track the top of it as the, as the x value increases as, uh, you know, just as the x quantity increases, we get the, a different representation. So when, when you see graphs like this, it's a representation of how these two quantities are changing together. As your x quantity changes, what does the blue quantity change? And then there's a static kind of interpretation of this too. So boom, I stop. So right where the plane is, right here. What does it represent? Boom, right there at the top of that blue bar. Somebody new? Yeah? Yeah, good. So you got a particular value of x. That's going to, now that's the corresponding value of the other quantity is shown vertically, and that gives us what on the graph? What does it give us? The graph is made up of really what? Points, right? So this is, instead of seeing this as like a wire that you bend and move around, you, you, the image that you should have of it as 
many, many, many points. Okay. All right. So that was kind of the point I was making yesterday. We're trying to see, like, when you see something like this in the future, it's really all about these bars that we've been analyzing, how the two quantities change together. It's a visual representation of that. Okay, so here's this term. Um, I think if you put that in, uh, if you type that in uh, like a Word document, you'll get the red line underneath it. It'll say misspelled because it doesn't recognize it as a word. But it's a term that, that uh, we want to have meaning to, okay? So maybe we're, we're making up our own word, okay? Covariation. So what is it? What does it conjure? So what do you think when you hear covariation? <clears throat> yes, sir. Two things that are different together. Two things that are different together. Okay. Anyone want? Yeah, it sounds good so far. Anyone want to expand on that? As uh, one thing changes, another thing will change with it. Right. Okay. The covariation is we got two changing quantities. So what it's referring to. Two changing quantities, how they change together. How do our topics thus far in the class relate to this idea of as one thing changes, how the other thing changes with it? Has what we've talked about so far had anything to do with that? Yeah? Um, when we use the bars, um, a lot of times they were like scaled together. Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah. Everything. Everything we've done so far has been about this. Okay. So the question is why? What does it have to do with calculus? Idea? Uh, calculus is all about relating two different rates. Yeah. So it's that's that. This is the medium. This idea of covariation. It's kind of the medium or the environment or the foundation for which we do calculus. So we really want to understand it well, okay? So calculus is, is built on looking at quantity, analyzing how quantities change together and modeling that. So let's just uh, kind of review. We started with multiplication and division, okay? So these operations, these are the basics of changing quantities and measurement. So we started with kind of really analyzing what is multiplication, what is division, what, it, what do you get when you do these operations, what do they represent. And then we moved on to visual representations. And so now we've talked about two. The first is these horizontal, this, this might have been less familiar, but we've worked a lot with those horizontal bars. Okay, um, in, I'll talk about, I'll say that in a second. And then... We're mentioning the more familiar visual representation, but we're, we've actually kind of stepped back and we've seen now where that comes from, right? So that's the example I showed earlier. Um, a graph, your, your typical graph in horizontal and vertical coordinates is another way to represent the covariation of two quantities. And so then on Wednesday, we started talking about symbolic representation of covariation. And that's function notation. I want to keep going with that. Uh, maybe we'll just quickly, quickly review what that was. Um, so we'll just say this is a Q1 and Q2. Uh, try that again. So we use function notation and we said there's this name of this function. We can name it anything, but you know, most 
the most common name is f. And then, so if f is our function, what goes goes inside the parentheses after the letter f, which is our name? Yeah. Independent variable, so I'm calling that Q1. So that the independent variable is our input. That goes in the parentheses. And then here's, here's the tricky thing where, where students kind of get tripped up sometimes. The whole thing as a unit now represents the output, so the value of the output. But it's a sp it's specific. What value of the output is it? When what? So the value of the output, say Q2. When what? Which value of output Q2 is that? Yes, sir? When Q1 is the input, is the input right? So this has the, it has like the power to generate many outputs. Which out, so the, the output that you're getting at any given time is dependent on which input you put in. So this is the value of the output Q2 when Q1 is the input. So seeing that as a whole, as a single unit, and, and really understanding what it means is going to be key for us. Okay, so we're going to practice some more of that. We started practicing that on Wednesday. We're going to have a practice sheet and spend significant part of class working on this. But I need to give you some context, so don't start, start working on it right away. <coughs> okay, when we, get to, when we get to the back, then pass left and right. I haven't counted. Okay, so here's a little bit, bit of information you'll need to get started here. Those top two lines. So I, I should have put this on the worksheet, so go ahead and write this on the top. T we're defining is the time since a Formula One car began moving after taking a pit stop, and that's in seconds. Okay, and then capital D. That's the distance traveled by the car since it started moving in meters. First, let me point some things out here. So notice how specifically I've defined these variables. I didn't say, do you see that I didn't say t equals time? And that's important because there's, there's different quantities of time that we could attach to the situation of a car leaving a pit stop. So you've got to be very specific when you define a variable. What time is it? This is very specific, the time since the Formula One car began moving from the pit stop. And then notice also that I, I labeled it with a unit in seconds. What about capital D equals distance? Would it work? Is it specific enough? Not even close. There's, there's lots of distances that we could define in that context, right? Distance from the finish line. Distance from the starting line. Um, yeah. And I'm saying here, this is the distance it's traveled since it started moving from the pit stop. Okay, Got to be specific, again, in meters. When you get to question four, it's asking you to um, interpret those expressions. All your interpretation should be in the context. It should all be about all, everything should be about the Formula One car. So that whatever you write there is what, what do those expressions mean for the car? Okay. Okay, so I encourage you to work together, talk it out, ask each other questions. I'll come around and I can check work for you and, and have some conversations. Um, this is really important stuff that we can really um, 
generate these symbols correctly and also interpret them correctly. Okay. Take your time. Work together. Go. Define the function in number one. I'm, I'm giving you the, the criteria for defining that function in number two, so don't define it in number one. I got it. 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 I got it.
It's just like saying Well then we go back to B and it looks like that. Because right? that's also the change of this. But I think it's in the same parentheses. <laughs> I think it's just G of T plus seven. <laughs> But is it plus or minus 7, or is it plus 7? Yeah. We can think of it like, we have G of whatever is T is plus 7, then it's like 3, and then you add 7, that's G of 10, and then if you want to cycle more, then you just take whatever you want. Whatever next time you want to take, you have 10, then you have another 7, so, since it's two times I don't feel I'm not That's just I just put it in the yeah, basically. This is traveling with seven seconds at it. Um, the distance traveled over any seven second time interval beginning at time two. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought the last one. Would that make sense? <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess it would be beginning at time B. Just a variable. Well, it would just be we just think of it as one number. So it's just very simple. Yeah, say B. Well, it really needs B. Yeah, two times the output for Arizona. I forgot about the time. Just the distance travel. So, and then we'll see if we need to change. 
Well, I'm still right, and I'm going to be Okay, so the distance traveled over seven second time when I got that. And then what did you say? The change in distance from uh, time is the distance traveled at C seconds minus Couldn't we just say that's the same as G of three? G of three. So tell me what G of three means. So what you wrote is essentially G of three. What is G of three? Uh, it is distance of the car over three seconds. Which three seconds? Uh, what was G of 8? I mean, so basically it's kind of like G of 8 or G of 9. Oh, in the first. So this is, tell me all together now, what is it? So the distance traveled by the car in the first three seconds. That's right. And what is it asking for there? Distance traveled by the car from two to five seconds. Is that the same thing? No, that's the no. Which will be greater, the one you're asked to find, or this? If it's a pit, if it's a car zooming out of the pit uh, stop. The bottom. This will be a greater distance, won't yeah. it? So you need to figure out how you're going to represent that greater distance. It's not this. So by by writing g of five minus two, you're essentially saying the distance in the first three seconds. And yours is different. You gotta think about it. Yes. Number four. Number four. You're writing out statements in the context of the car. I think you have yes. to. Your statements are about the car. Number four. Number four. Uh, 
traveled by the car from the Yes. So I model it after that. Um, I think it'd be similar to people that you just Okay, so I got the change in the car systems from those three seconds time to all the gain at H to T equals I just changed it to my good. And it would be identical to that. What it what do you need to change or what do you need that so there's this time T the distance traveled quarter in the first H Okay. And then there's this other time what? Seven? No. What's that? Yeah, but we don't. Do we care about seven seconds after the pit stop? Read it. What does it say? Okay. Over any time interval beginning at time t. So what is this time? Well, it's bigger than T. How much bigger than T is it? Well, so what would it be? Are the same, what is that quantity of time? T plus seven. So how much time is this right here? Seven seconds. So now, what it's asking for is represent the distance traveled in those seven seconds. How are you going to represent the distance traveled in those seven seconds? The seven seconds starting at T and ending seven seconds later. You see? So what are you going to subtract? Well, now we're talking about distance. These are times. Now it's asking for the distance traveled. How do you get distance from time in this problem? How do we represent distance? Okay, but yeah. So, specific distance. Still, I worked out this morning. I didn't eat. 
the distance after nine. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah. We did uh, legs today. My legs are so sore. He fell over because <laughs> his legs are so tired. He needs squats, like body weight squats, and then he can go down. G. Function G. That's the whole point. Oh, like what we are doing. Oh. We're working. We're, this is giving us. This gives us the distance. T seconds after leaving the, t after the pit stop. So what's G of four? It's not four seconds after the pit stop. What is this? It's not a time. This is not a time. The distance. The distance one. The distance the car traveled when? When? Four seconds from the pit stop. Okay. What's G of B? What does that represent? G always does. That's what our function is. The very first thing you wrote was D equals G of T. So whenever you use the function g, you're representing a which distance? The distance this many seconds after leaving the pit stop. That's what g of whatever represents. So how are you going to get the distance t plus 7 seconds after the pit stop? Tell me what it is. No, we didn't do it. And what does that represent again? Distance. Which distance? How long after the pit stop? T. T plus seven. This is the distance traveled by the car. T plus seven seconds after leaving the pit pit stop. When we were looking at T plus seven seconds, we wanted to know. How far would it have traveled in t plus seven seconds? So what? How far does it travel in the first t seconds? How do we represent how the distance the car has traveled? Right. So how far has it traveled in the first t seconds? So what's the distance it's traveled? Starting at time t and ending at t plus 7, or in other words, the 7 second interval after time t. How? That's this distance. That's the distance that goes in the first t plus 7 seconds. We want to know what this distance is. See, it covers all this distance in t plus 7 seconds. And it covers this much distance in the first t seconds. So how much does it cover in that seven seconds? Tell me the expression. T, that's it. It's really crucial that you can get there yourself and understand that. Okay, you're welcome. Other questions? Okay, all right. Questions. Uh, first of all, this one was wrong, right? <coughs> yeah, I don't know. Do you guys have a conversation? Yeah, yeah, good. So what was it? Okay, this is good. Okay, and then also, I had a question about the way you What, like, a different way to write it is just the distance traveled over eight seconds with a crazy cancel out. So again, it's that kind of back to the same question you're asking. Is this is G of three? Yeah. You're asking, is this the same as G of H? That's what you're asking. Yeah. Right. What is G of H? This is travel over H seconds. Which H seconds? The first time. Which what is this? This is traveled over. Like eight seconds that would over a three second interval. No, so we're an eight second interval, but yeah, I mean, it's either way. That way. Starting one. Uh, <coughs> anywhere? No. H plus three? No. At three? At three. See, if you take the distance in three seconds, 
g of 3. And you have the distance in n plus 8 seconds. This will be a greater distance, right? Right. So if you subtract these, what distance are you getting? No. Here's the, here's the distance in the first three seconds. Here's the distance in all three plus eight seconds. So what distance would you get if you subtract? Okay. Yes, right? Right. This would be g of 3 plus 8. So I think the way we were thinking of it was is t is still equal to what you see? Yeah, I'm waiting to see. What, dis what distance is that? That's the distance starting when? Uh, starting when? Well, I'll say 3 seconds. And ending? H seconds later. Is that the same as G of H? What's G of H? G of H is the distance of the first H second. Is that the same as this distance? No. So you can't do those. You can't. Oh, I'll just subtract this inside. No, you've got to say, what does that mean? What does that mean? And now, what would they mean if you subtract it? You can't. It does not equal this. Okay. The reason it doesn't is just because of the meanings, like we were talking about. Right. Alright, that makes sense. D is um, G of T plus 7 minus G. Okay, let me give you a, just a, a quick preview of recitation today. You're going to get your homeworks back, and then you're specifically going to go over some of the questions in the homework 2 with all the bars, the one you handed in Wednesday. So you'll practice some of those or go over the ones that you, you want. And then, uh, so, then after that, you're going to have a quiz, and the quiz will cover everything from this week. Yeah, recitation is quiz day. That's what a recitation is. It's quiz day. So, and then on the quiz is this stuff, this worksheet type stuff. So, a couple more minutes to ask questions. You can also, you might have a couple minutes in recitation to ask questions. So, bring that to recitation. But my feeling as I walked around is a lot of you are really getting it. You're doing well. So... Just those who are still struggling, ask me now. Bring this to Oh, did we not have it in the homework? Today's homework? Oh, no, this is the class activity. Class activity, save it. That material is on the quiz. What? Do you have a question? That's what I can get. So that's that's what I got. Why is it changing? That's why I can change the bar section with any three second time interval beginning. Well, I guess it's all. I don't think, because he's not registered, like, in the class for grand talk meters, I don't think we're going to do that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like, so a lot of people, like, aren't registered. First time. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
in the parentheses. What is that? So the whole thing is the distance. It's just the A part. It's the time. You say it all together. G of A equals what? No. G of A is not the time. It's the distance traveled by the car. A seconds after leaving at the top. Distance it travels in the, in the first a seconds after leaving the pit stop. See, this is always about how long since we left the pit stop. So, input how long time since we left the pit stop, and then this tells me this is representing the distance it went in that time. Well said. So, what would two g of a? We're going to take that number. That's a number, right? Multiply by two. So then what would that number be? So minus two. Twice the distance. Twice which distance? Twice the distance the car went. Eight seconds. Eight seconds. Okay. Better? Thank you. Okay. Who's next? Uh, 
You sent the email about bringing our laptops over. We didn't get there, so we'll. Uh, oh, I so I don't need to bring it to restitution. No. Yeah, we'll we're start. We're going to start doing that stuff on Wednesday. Wednesday, okay. we'll start working with the driving calculator. Right. Okay. Bring it back Wednesday. Yeah, I'll I'll send. I'll remind you again. Um, I rolled it in class on Tuesday, so oh. I never got to take that free test. <laughs> yeah, because you had Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday to do it. I thought it was only Monday. Oh no, you're right. This class was Monday, Monday and Tuesday. All right, um, you can come to my office hour next, like Tuesday or Wednesday, which is on Blackboard. Okay. And you can take an office hour. Okay, thank you. I appreciate it. You're